All right, everybody, we almost made it through another season. We're into October, and we're talking October musky fishing lures, Steve. I know with uh, September, you're generally in shallower. As we start to move into October, you're going to start to push out a little bit deeper on the break lines. Let's talk about water temperature wise for some of these baits because for people that listen in the south, this may not these baits might come into play in November and not necessarily October. True. So what are we looking at for water temperatures when you start to think about using these baits that we have set out here today? Well, October here in the northern Midwest, we're Wisconsin guys, um, it's a month of transition, no doubt. This is when we see the water temperatures drop drastically throughout the course of the month. Um, we're gonna lose a lot of temperature throughout the course of that month for sure. Um, typically at the beginning of the month I'm still fishing shallow, up shallow on shallow flats and as that month progresses the fish slide deeper, get on those break lines and by the end of the month we're fishing steep and deep structure and prominent points. So it really does change throughout the course of the time. Uh, water temperature wise um, this period is usually 60 degrees down to probably 45 degrees at the end of the month, maybe even colder depending on how the fall goes. All right, so then let's talk about baits. It looks like we got a bunch of rubber baits set out here. Let's talk rubber first. What are your primarily Absolutely. primarily tactics with rubber? So I'll tell you what, October in my brain is the month for rubber. It's probably the month that I use it the most, Jeff. Uh, most days, a lot of times, uh, we'll use exclusively rubber depending on the bite and the success that we're having. A um, Couple of things that are our go-to's for me are obviously Magnum Bulldogs and Pounder Bulldogs. Uh, that's the standard weighted one in the Pro, Pro Dog. I like that flexible harness. Uh, creates a very lively action in the water. Um, when the fish are a little bit deeper, that's a great bait in the fall. Uh, now, this time of year, I'm not ripping like we did in the summer when we were working in those heavy weeds. It's more of a pull pause with a lot longer pauses, uh, a little bit slower pulls. Uh, we're generally slowing down and extending our pauses is always a good idea. Uh, the, mallow, or the shallow Magnum Bulldog, Jeff, is uh, a tool that I use a lot. In fact, the biggest fish that I got last fall filming with you was on that shallow Magnum Dog, and that was very late in October. Um, and when I reach for that shallow model is when those fish want a slower drop speed. So a weighted dog is going to drop very quickly, a shallow dog is going to drop very slowly. Two very different presentations. And there's days absolutely when that shallow dog will come into play. And I'll fish it in deep water, it just takes longer for it to get down there. But once it gets down there, it does trigger bites that I think sometimes these quicker moving baits won't trigger. So how about tubes? Let's talk tubes. When are you going to use a tube over a dog? You know, I'll use them together a lot. Um, if the fish are way up shallow, I'm generally going to reach for the dogs. If the fish are out on the edges a little more, I'm generally going to go for the tubes. But I'll use both in both areas. Um, in fact, I won $50,000 in 2012. I won the World Musky Tour Championship, Jeff, on the Red October tube. And that was mid-October, and we were working those steep edges. And the fish were in the cover, but they are on those very steep breaks. And uh, the 10-inch tube was awesome. We got all the fish we needed to take that win and it's a lure that I rely on a lot. Uh, tubes are a little bit more of a finesse style bait, um, so a lot of times I'll mold what bait I'm having my client throw depending on how they work the lure, how, what they feel confident in, and basically I'll watch them work the presentation, try to you know put the right lure in the right person's hands. Um, both work on any given day, especially in that month of October. So then the other thing I noticed here is we have also a selection of what I would consider to be fall baits, but definitely shallower baits than what these do right. these dogs are going to run and the rubber is going to run. Absolutely. When When is it you're going to start using the Hellhound, your Suix, your Exorcist, and your Swimming Dog type baits? So again, when those fish are still up shallow, more earlier in the fall, earlier in that October transition period, um, I like these shallow straight running uh, uh, shallow dogs. This is the shallow mag and this is the regular um, sh uh, swimming dog. Uh, both work very well in October and again it's it's more of a plain Jane retrieve, a slower straight retrieve. I'll give it a small pull or pause or a slight twitch on the retrieve. These baits get bitten in the figure eight almost all the time. So when you come in on that first turn, those fish are slowly following along and it makes that turn at the boat and that's when they'll grab them. And whenever I have fish hanging tight and thick cover, still in that early fall time period, I'm gonna want to grab these jerk baits, the exorcist, the 10 inch weighted suic. Uh, this is your personal favorite. Jeff's caught numerous fish with me on this one. Um, and then, of course, you guys know me and my hellhounds. I love the hellhound, and it works very, very well in the October time period. Whenever you're in that 60 down to that 45 temperature range, uh, gliding style jerk baits, Jeff, are very effective. You're creating that instinctual response, and you're throwing in those long pauses. A lot of times, that long pause is the key to getting bit, you know, in that time period. So, whenever the fish are a little bit shallower, still, I'll reach for the jerk baits. And as they move out deeper, I'm going to the heavier rubber. And that happens all through the course of the month, and of course every year is different depending on the weather patterns. The one thing we didn't mention, 
that every angler should use a lot as long as it's allowable in their area is uh, live bait definitely should have a sucker rig out yep, should absolutely. have a sucker out so this time of year here in Wisconsin we're allowed to run multiple lines so I'll always have one or two suckers off the back of the boat I use the Shumway clip and go rig which I know you market great rig I've been through them all tried many different rigs over the course of my career uh, by far the highest hooking percentage I found is with that Shumway clip and go rig uh, we don't miss very many Jeff of course you're going to miss a few on live bait it's part of the deal uh, but that Shumway clip and go is very very effective um, and I'm usually running those suckers shallow at the beginning of the month, running them right along those edges or even right through the shallow flats. And then as that month progresses, I will run those suckers down deep and run them right at the base of that break line when those fish are on those steep and deep points. And uh, it's a really cool way to get live bait in a position where it's very hard to cast. Uh, it's hard to get a lure right at the base of that break in 20 feet of water. Um, so we can cast the top of the brakes, work the brake line, and then also run a sucker right along the base of that break. So we're covering all three zones as we go through an area. Obviously in places like Minnesota where you only have one line per person, uh, a lot of strategy you guys use will have one guy casting up front and have one or two other guys in the boat and they'll run suckers off the back. So you have one guy drawing some fish in and checking that shallow spots and then running some suckers down deep so you can do the one-two punch as well. So there you go. I hope that gives you some options for October and some idea on where the fish are located. Obviously, it's water temperature thing. So if you're in the southern, if, you know, if you're in southern Illinois and even south further, things may change a little bit. You might have to, you know, push your transition back a little bit. But hopefully, this gives you an idea of a place to start. We hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel.